Okay, here we are. Uh, this is Queenstown Life, very first recording of podcast. Um, we are in my house, aka where it all happens. <laughs> Four miles lane. Uh, yeah, and we have Dugald Peters here with us. Um, hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, listeners. Hello. Um, so, uh, the reason I asked you here is to because I want to get to know some people of Queenstown and why they're here, because there's a lot of us who are from very different places. Um, so, basically, maybe you want to tell us a little bit about yourself. How we're upsetting um, or improving Queenstown. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> how you got here. And, um, yeah, just basically... A little bit about yourself. My trip, my, my arrival to Queenstown. Um, obviously, heard about it when I was just a youth as a fairly adventurous uh, place, but uh, I actually came here because I was uh, doing a scuba diving trip to Fiji and mm. the price of air tickets was quite expensive. And I thought, what is it for a round the world ticket? And it was £90 more to go around the world. And I decided I'd go Fiji, New Zealand, Australia, and Africa, South Africa, and then home. But as with many people in Queenstown, I did Fiji and then got stuck in Queenstown. <laughs> and um, at the very last minute, went uh, to Australia for a couple of weeks, went home, resigned from my jobs, picked up my skis and came back. And been here ever since. That was okay. about 11 years ago. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so did you, did you start working when you got here? Or did you just, were you a ski bum? Day two of arriving in Queenstown, I had two jobs and a house to stay in. Nice. One of which was working at one of the uh, ice bars, the only one at the time, down in Queenstown Centre, um, as a barman. Good, because it finished early, so you could go out and uh, make the most of Queenstown. <laughs> and the day job, which started at sort of 7 or 8 in the morning, was uh, working for one of the power gliding companies, uh, basically promoting, rigging, driving, having a bunch of fun, and obviously uh, learning to power glide at the same time. Yeah. And that was from day two, and that went on for about a year. Yeah. Working about 100 hours a week. And uh, <laughs> trying to survive and having quite a lot of fun. Um, and then I got stuck into some team building jobs for a company. And that was part time. Uh, now, the only reason I kind of knew who you were were you were known as the man with the backpack and the army trousers at the front runner race. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, everyone, every, <laughs> everybody tell. used to say, do gold and I'd be like who and they go backpack army trousers and I'd be like ah oh, yeah I know who he is so there's obviously I should ask you who everyone is <laughs> yeah, saying that exactly yeah. um, there's obviously a history there of stupid army <laughs> yeah. typeness so what 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 is where is that from yeah back in the day I um, well that, that running with the weight if it's all... traumatic don't talk about it <laughs> no it's not it may be traumatic for people listening <laughs> they might have heard it before no, I, um, I spent a little bit of time in the army back in the UK, um, primarily as a, a part-time in the parachute regiment. Yeah. And we used to do all sorts of cool stuff. I did it while I was at art college, um, and I used to get a lot out of it, jumping into different countries at the weekends and, and uh, a lot of training trips all over the world, operating with different uh, forces, uh, operational uh, once in the Gulf. And I just like the style of training. I like the camaraderie. Parachute regiments are very much a, a bond. Um, in fact, I'm going back to the UK soon for one of the weddings, and I haven't seen those guys for too many years. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to keep training like that. So we get we all get together and roll around on the floor and uh, sadly, do command sadly, rolls. I don't think that actually, <laughs> no, probably, it probably will happen. Yeah. <laughs> no, they'll be they all come. Everyone's coming from all over the different parts of the world. We've got guys coming from America. Um, I'm, I'll be coming probably I think the furthest New Zealand unless anyone's made it to Antarctica or South America um, and yeah really good good guy Stuart's getting married so we'll, we'll get together they'll all be there they'll all be older they'll all be there getting together and married with children <laughs> and I'll rock up and I'll just be me again wonderful so with slightly less, less hair and they will point that out nice <laughs> I like it so two sides to you that I know are the mule which we'll talk about in a little bit, bit, little bit, and then Imagination Conspiracy, who I've had the pleasure of working with. No, we've had the pleasure. Oh yeah, <laughs> shut up. Um, and so explain a little bit about that because the guy that you work with, Patrick. Patrick Duffy, yep. 
doesn't he doesn't live in Queenstown? Does Patrick's he? Uh, he's Kiwi. Um, Patrick Duffy's a very creative uh, fellow that I've been lucky enough to know now for several years, working for another company when I was just an employee yeah. of an event company, and um, we did lots of cool jobs together and got to know him very really well. He's very funny, easy to hang out with, and we played around with some ideas for a long time um, about. Uh, team building but in a more creative way we've both got a creative background he's a graphic designer and a sort of theatre sports character entertainer um, and he's also had a lot of success with the world of wearable arts and worked a little bit with wetter workshops oh. my background is um, well I, I studied sculpture for two degrees in Edinburgh um, and I, was, I, I became a master of fine arts and if you take the letters there MFA you can decide what I was a master <laughs> of um, <laughs> And I like to design things, and I love ideas, and I love um, just creating things and, and, and sort of building, etc. So we set up a company called Imagination Conspiracy, um, which is all about creative development and anything where we can throw in some some solutions for people or some fun activities. Because quite often that's all team building is, but that has that creative spin on it, getting people to think outside the box. That's where we will go, and that's where we'll take them. I can see the path: army, <laughs> sculpture. It all goes together. Are, yeah. Through history, there's been a lot of connection between <laughs> art and army, funny enough. Um. However, when I was at art college with all these free, free spirited art art people, it was the army guys who showed more interest in my art world than it was the artists oh, showing really? more inter interest in my army side. Because you can pretend to be a pacifist, etc., with little understanding, <laughs> whereas the army guys accepted what they were and were interested in the diversity of those around them. It's quite interesting. It's deep. It's getting deep. It, is, it was good. It's I getting deep it. in Goldfield Heights. And, and out of all the people I met, I'm, I'm still friends with the army guys. And, and I, I know of what's happening with a few of the art guys, and that's it. Yeah. You know? There's only so much bullshit you can do. <laughs> exactly. So that <laughs> that side of, it, of your work sits on the side until you get work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that just sits there, and that just kind of... The Imagination Conspiracy. Yeah, stuff. yeah, it's we're the, it's a new company along with the Mule, which we'll talk about in a bit. But um, they're both new companies, and uh, we've had to we've coming from nothing. We've got contacts we know and people who support us through the industry, but it's all word of mouth. We've had the one the job you worked on, for example, word of mouth, long term client of Patrick through his creative entertainment, um, and it's actually just recently it's just really started to build up. We've been sending out proposals, getting more contacts again, but. Like with everything, it's marketing costs, so we have to really be careful. We all have other jobs, um, and we're trying to build it um, as safely as we can, but also, you know, we want these to work. And yep. We're not putting a lot of pressure on any one business. We've all got different things going on, Patrick and myself, and obviously the guys we use. You don't put pressure on one being the solution, I think. It's about having a few streams and, and making them all work at a really nice level, yep. not building up huge overheads which is, you know, big offices for the people. You know, some would say that's the wrong way to look at business, but at, in Queenstown, certainly, it seems if we can utilise great locals, such as yourself, um, then we can obviously, obviously still run the programmes really well. But also pay your rent. Yeah, well, hopefully pay some rent in there which as well. everybody yeah. has to do. Yeah, well, that's why I do a few standard jobs as well, but none of them are standard either, so... Standard. Yeah. So the mule came from where... Uh, funny enough, when I set up, uh, we were working on Imagination Conspiracy and was going to be doing a lot more in the, with some other sporting events, um, much like the Front Runner Series, etc. Yeah. I thought I wouldn't have time for one of these all-terrain obstacle course or mud run type ideas. Yeah. So before you go into that, people who don't know what the mule is, um, a lot of people have heard of Tough Mudder, Mudder yep. which is, races, yeah. Yeah, which came, became really popular or probably, well, I can remember it kind of... Tough Mod has been running and growing now for, I think it's five five years, something like that. Yeah. It's one of the fastest growing franchise industries and big businesses in the world. And, and why do you think people like being sprayed with horse poo and running, <laughs> and running through, uh, running through um, obstacles of fire and electric fences? Um, good thing about all of these sort of events, and we are... We are different to the Tough Mudder style events in, in a number of ways because we're not a franchise and we focus very much on the, where we are and we want it to be a Queenstown product because yep. fundamentally we love Queenstown, love the area and don't want to water it down, I want it to be a special iconic event. 
However, for all of these events, whether it's a Tough Mud or a Spartan race, you know, I'm off to one down south, a local Winton um, Muddy Buddy event uh, this Sunday, and another one up in Christchurch, hopefully if I can, uh, at the end of the month. They are a form of uh, challenge that's not about the race or the speed. Um, it's more about the people you do it with and how yeah. you do it, and it's about the fun element. So people look at these courses and they're hard and they're muddy and they've got obstacles in, but because of that, there's a very limited expectation on, on what speed or time you should do it on. So you get together, you get fancy dress, you get together as a team, whatever it is, even if you do it as an individual, you make mates on the day yeah. and you go out and have a go. And you're doing something really active that you might not be the person who goes for the 10K run race, you know, or the Ironmans or the... Or the you know, bike races or mountain bike challenges, etc. But you can go, hey, I'm going to go out and run around that muddy field and have some fun. Because yeah. we're all kids at heart. Um, and it doesn't actually matter your shape, your size, your fitness, anything on a lot of those events. And, and including in the mule. The mule is also open, and as proved on the first event, for everyone. Yeah. Um, we do take a slightly different tap that we l limit it in, in waves of people. Um, so that those that do want to really push it, and, and when we say it's New Zealand's toughest all-terrain obstacle course, because it is more about the terrain, it is more about the obstacles, it's not so much about the mud, um, based on where we live. We use rivers, we use hills, and we use fully engineered obstacles built into the ground. Um, they're the biggest in New Zealand, they're awesome, they're loads of fun, they take quite a lot of um, practice if you really want to nail them, but people who've never seen them before, still got over them, had loads of fun. Yeah. Point is, we reduce the waves. If you want to go for it and you really want to nail it and be, you know, up there in the speed, you can still do that on our course. There are some obstacles where you're going to hope somebody's quite close to you to help you. You're going to help each other. So even if you're racing that person in one and two, number one position, number two position, and we don't really use the words races, but those guys would. Yeah. They have to help each other. Okay. Um, but at the same time, you've got the mass, the body, just having fun, getting some awesome times if they want them. We give times, but it's not a big emphasis. We throw in some cool prizes, but the majority of the prizes are spot prizes, and then it's just all about the day and having a go. We've got two awesome. events, so summer and winter, and they do differ a little bit. So for somebody who is thinking about getting into business in Queenstown, <laughs> um, as I have just done, yeah. and I'm having a great old time with tax. Yeah, um, and GST, What are yeah. your... Um, because it's not all glamorous. It's not oh. all, you know, people who, you know, people who look at companies and people who run races think, oh yeah, they're coming oh, in Mara. What are the? <laughs> give me, say, three things that you need to think about. Uh -huh. Not not necessarily events, but just no, no. Well, being it, in business. The two different companies. Uh, I'll try and think of three in the process of talking. And think about, about it in terms of Queenstown as well. Yeah. Well, the the first one, imagination conspiracy been going a little bit longer than Mule now, but it had minimum setup costs mm -hmm. because it's all intellectual property. And we believe we are, um, we're a rental property, not an investment. Yeah. It, it, the company is based primarily on those that drive it. And and we can't, you so say, we can't, we're not going to try and we can't sell it as a franchise. We can sell some ideas if we had to and sell a business if we had a great database. But the reality is it comes down to who we utilize and who we think are the right people to use on events and, and, our, and whatever we come up with as well. And we enjoy doing that. And so it's a rental property. Use us now because we won't be around. So that's got very little capital investment in terms of finances, but it takes a lot of time to create products. And, and that particular business is not just Queenstown. We are international. We can travel anywhere. The other business, which is kind of, you know, almost not quite full circle, but it has a huge capital investment, the mule, because we put so much money into the ground, basically, and the setup and commitment to land rentals and and marketing and, and a, a public event that relies on, you know, public um, interest. So your heart's going to be racing all the time. You're going to have a lot of sleepless nights. Yeah. You're going to have to decide that <laughs> you're putting, if, if, it is, if it's a capital-heavy business, you're going to have to just accept that. But what you don't realise, or what perhaps I, under, I missed and I overlooked, was you've got the initial, yeah, project. We're going to um, do this this thing we're going to build this course for example the mule we're going to put this much money it's going to cost this much diggers materials uh, marketing etc and you do it and you get the first event and it's all great and you know what you've invested into it it's the bit afterwards it's like now 
Okay. Or well, you're not learning any more. Yeah, that first event as an event works. Yeah. We we are very focused on keeping it at a good value. Queenstown is notoriously expensive in all worlds, both of those businesses, whether it's the corporate world coming yeah. into Queenstown or the public market who live here or maybe coming in for events. We are expensive. There's no doubt about it. We have a reputation as being expensive, and it's sad. Um, I'm not saying that doesn't go with the quality that is offered as well, but we have to be aware of how to provide that value. So three things to be aware of, I, I, I guess... Um, in the, in the excitement of setting up something or, or the initial um, go, 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 try and take a, a moment to think about it in that medium term as well as the long term. Yeah. So for us, the long term is trying to go with the really good value and play the numbers game so we get people interested, i.e. the public event only costs so much so that we will ultimately rely on having big numbers as opposed to charging those that are interested lots of money. So that's your sort of long term game but it's really hard in the short term. Um, if you can, do your projections and all that sort of financial stuff and have somebody on the side who can help. Yeah. You know, we're not cuffing it, but we're certainly not. You know, there's, there's people who say, well, a classic question you always get is, what's your marketing budget? <laughs> and I think the most common response is there isn't one. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to be quite clever. The other thing is, we are Queenstown. If you're looking at Queenstown, be clever about it. You know, we're a unique location. Um... So don't be afraid to get out and, and, and talk to people and find local support. And we're very, very lucky that we focus our project. The Mule is a great example. We said we want local support. We want community buy-in. And that's because we want it to be something the community can look back on and go, we've got the Mule in Queenstown. Yeah. It's, part of, yeah. you know, it's part of Queenstown. There's some other great events uh, locally, and they've built up over the last sort of 10 years. Yeah. Most happy is an example. It's changed hands a couple of times now. Or once at least, anyway, recently. Um, and people know it. Whatever they take from it is mixed. It's a good event. Um, and we'd like to get the mule beyond that. We want it to be something that everyone can enjoy. And the feedback from the first event was great. Um, I'm not sure I'm a complete expert on these sort of things at the moment. I'm, I'm very much learning myself, and that's what it is. That's all about, it, yeah, but yeah, always we're all be making it up. Open ears, you know. Yeah. You've got two ears, one mouth, use them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Just, just don't give up though too easily. It's yeah. really testing at times. Like, yeah. Right, right now. now. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you're trying to buy wood for the fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, getting flatmates and selling everything you own just to keep going. Yeah. But uh, in some respects, that's kind of cool. I'd rather go out in a ball of fire than a puff of smoke. Yeah. Um, I might regret saying that one day, but. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> and so a thought, a thought, and and I know it's hard to think about what you want to see for the future because you could go, yeah. Tens of thousands of people entering the mule, and blah, blah, blah. but what what is a a thought for the future in a in your business world? And in in do all Peters and his great partners, etc. In God, Queenstown, don't enter that world. Yeah, never <laughs> ever open that door. Don't um, no, I think I was well, certainly. There's a lot happening in terms of the mule, even now, where we're looking to create uh, community funds and and set up. Uh, sort of corporate social responsibility options for um, less funded groups to be able to come and benefit from a, a, our product that would be um, in some respects giving back you know we watch I'd love to do something I'd love to get to the point where our businesses can do some good other than the immediate good of those people who are taking part getting that challenge but I mean in a slightly more long term so we could be one of the sort of fundraising events from the public point of view mm -hmm. from the corporate point of view we can slice a piece off what the corporates pay and we put it into a fund that can then be accessed by your youth organizations by your health and fitness organizations yeah. by people who don't necessarily have the means to come and do the event and of course we will always try and accommodate everyone but there are costs that you just can't overlook you know you got your insurances etc um but ideally at this stage at this stage in the where I'm at, I enjoy the diversity of them all, and I'd like each project, you know, uh, but the imagination conspiracy in the mule to, to to be doing enough to sustain themselves um, without being sort of greedy or anything. But so we can have a nice, you know, event or two a month in the imagination conspiracy and corporate incentives, whatever that is, or, or overseas, and then um, a couple of public public events. Really, really important to the mule. It's still number one. It's still primary um, focus. 
but then also having some corporate functions out there or some groups that offset against these uh, community groups. Yeah. And we're already talking to the booth. Um, they want to do a four-week uh, training camp even now up to the next event on, on the 5th of July. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> get, plug that. Just get that in there. Awesome. Um, yeah, and be able to not focus on money. And the only reason I'd ever focus on money is the debt I have as opposed to yeah. wanting a stack yeah. of cash hidden away somewhere because I don't really care about that. I love how I've put thoughts for the future dash cat. <laughs> Cats, my cat. Oh, look, my alarm's gone off. I need to get up. I need to get up. It's morning. (laughs) Get up. Ah! No, that's to tell you to shut up. All right, yeah, Um, 20 minutes. That's only one question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love that. Thoughts for the future. Cat. You've got a cat. What's it called? We're by the fire with a glass of wine. You'll be here all night. (laughs) What's what's your cat called? Uh, That is Mila the Mancoon, or on some occasions, Ming the Merciless. (laughs) Or... I hate uh, uh, you. You swore at it this morning because it threw up in your front it room. It almost poked my eyeball out. Nice, morning, actually. That's beautiful. Me and Man- beautiful Mancoons thing. are a cat breed that I wasn't very familiar <laughs> with, and I now am as a result of basically um, inherit not inheriting. I don't know. Um, I, I've got the cat. Put it that we, way. We're tapping into an untouched world here. Yeah. I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit concerned. But the cat, the mancoon breed, is very much oh God, like dogs. Goes. Believe it or not, and you can train them. So I have been training it to um, attack uh, on command. Oh God! <laughs> uh, moving on swiftly, um, I've put um, your favourite because it's it is crazy here. It's crazy, and sometimes I have to get out of here. Um, your favourite quiet place in Queenstown? Where is it? That's a, that's a very good question. Because you'll go and then we'll all follow you and then it won't yeah. be quiet anymore. It's secret, I'm not telling you. <laughs> no, I'm quite, there's no one place. I don't do it enough and having a sort of avi- aviation passion um, and, and a paragliding interest, which has sadly been neglected lately, because you do lose some of your hobbies and all these, or you do have to give up some things uh, in the meantime. I find I can relax the most um, high up, whether it's on a paraglider at the top of a mountain, um, flying my planes, or uh, you know somewhere where you kind of have to be in that moment to be doing it anyway. And there's probably, you know there's lots of things like that. But I around here we've got you know I used to walk up Bowen Peak a lot, which yeah. is next to Bowen Lomond. And I'd actually speed fly down and just shot over jet, and I, nice. you know, all sorts of stuff. And in being up there, you've, you've achieved <laughs> a you know, sense of achievement as well as being in a really peaceful, beautiful location. Uh, same when you're flying, you know, you, you've got to focus on what you're doing. Your mind can't wander. No. However, I did recently find paddle boarding. I had a go at that. Paddle boring. Pa- oh, no, sorry. Pa- yeah, paddle boring. Did I just say that oh, no, out loud? Exact, no, but that's... <laughs> oh, I've just that's, unleashed the word. I know. This is... You're, you're going to be hated. No, I actually... That's probably why. <laughs> because it's so cruisy, I, my mind just I don't off. get it. I did it once. I had to focus. It. Maybe I had to focus so much on balance. It's like, what's the point? I'm looking at Catherine now. Oh, I know. Mind. No, my mind can switch off and the, and the uh, you know, you can't answer your phone on it because I thought you don't have your phone oh, on no. you. I'd fall in. So anyway, you can get away from your phone. It's pretty good these days, isn't it? So, to end... Where's your quiet space? I, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I'm going to uh, get a speaker in there. Sam Summers. That's my favourite. I do like Sam Summers. Yeah. Yeah, now, now there'll be a horde of people up there. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm going to do quick fire. All right? You can't <laughs> think about it. Just answer. Uh, tiger or lion? Tiger. Diamond, oh, no, I've wrote really wrong. I can't even read my own writing. Um, <laughs> almond or walnut? Oh, almond. That's weird. Brittany or Christina? Christina. Gin or vodka? Vodka. Death by chocolate or peanut butter? Chocolate. I hate peanut butter. Um, <laughs> would you, Although peanut butter would kill me. In your life, would you put have a rewind button or a pause button? You didn't offer a future button. No, no, no. Oh, rewind have, or pause. Um, Oh, if I had to quick fire, it's rewind. Rewind. Okay. But that's more like a time machine question. Oh, shut up. You can't have extra. Um, and then the last thing is one song that you, if you had to play forever, what would it be? Oh, oh, um, there's lots, but um, it'd either be Marvin Gaye probably or Which one? Paul Simon. Marvin Gaye could be, oh, no. Um, Let's get it on. Is a very good tune, um, or or even a bit metal, uh, whatever is. Um, we've got all the time in the world by um, Louis Armstrong. That's a beautiful song. Oh God, you can't choose one. There's so many good ones. 
They're useless. I'll email it to you. Email. Okay. <laughs> Do you go, Peters? Thank you. We need some ending music. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun.